hopefully you're all here for our talk about navigating the software supply chain defense landscape. Um, thank you all for coming, um, and we'll just get into it. First of all, a little bit about us. Um, I'm Marina Moore. I'm a PhD candidate at NYU, as well as a maintainer of a number of open source security projects, including Tuff, Intoto, and Uptane. And I'm also a co-chair of Tag Security. Um, hi, and I'm Adit here. I'm also a PhD candidate at NYU. I do a bunch of uh, open source and software supply chain security. Uh, uh, I'm one of the maintainers of Intoto and a few other things like the parts of the Intoto specification. I'm the maintainer of GitHub over at the OpenSSF Sandbox and I've contributed to a bunch of CNCF and other OpenSSF efforts as well. So given that you're all in the room, uh, you probably really care about your software supply chain and actually securing it. And I'm guessing a part of that reason is because of the massive increase in software supply chain attacks we've seen in the last few years uh, with like a ridiculous number of like high profile numbers uh, incidents as well um, and the other reason why you probably care about it is uh, all of those attacks has led to the form creation of new regulations in the United States in the EU that require you to uh, care about securing your software supply chain as well so and, and you know, uh, as, as someone who's sort of new to this space, you're obviously going to be like, okay, where do I start? How do I, you know, start securing my software supply chain? Do I create this thing called an S bomb, a software bill of materials that I keep hearing about? And and does my S bomb, you know, solve all my problems? And should I be signing my S bomb or my software releases? And who should sign it? And who actually verifies these signatures if we actually sign it? All of these questions that just keep coming up. And at the end of it, you're like, is there like a tool that I can just deploy and it does all of these things for me, all of my software supply chain security problems are solved. And let me just look this up and see what shows up. And then you suddenly hit with a ridiculous number of tools again that they all have the software supply chain uh, keywords somewhere in there because they're all just solving different like you know parts of it. And this can also be really overwhelming, right? And again, these are all just like, uh, most of these are just like uh, open source tools and uh, projects, a couple of them are maybe uh, platforms, but none of them really are like companies that also come along and are trying to solve your software supply chain security problems. So th this list would, uh, this, this list of logos, it's not a list, but you know, this uh, set of logos would be even bigger if we try to actually include everyone that's trying to do software supply chain security. And so to take it like, you know, a step back and to kind of make sense of all of that, uh, we're trying to. Uh, we're going to start with some of the, like, the building blocks and like separating some of these tools from like the concepts. And the first concept that you probably heard of a bit yesterday in a few talks and just generally, you know, looking at the space, is the notion of an attestation, right? Uh, you've, you've heard this word a lot, and it's actually quite simple. Like conceptually, an attestation is some piece of metadata that contains some claims about your software artifacts or some things that are happening in your software supply chain that produces these artifacts or uh, you know, transforms them in some ways. And there isn't just you know, one attestation out there. You're going to have different types of attestations. And, each, uh, and, and usually, it's, it's, it's like explicitly listed in the attestation itself. And for a lot more information of how this works, you should take a look at the Intoto attestation framework. The other building block is signatures. Uh, we really, signatures are really important in our software supply chain because they answer this question of the who, right? Uh, who signed, uh, who's making that claim that's recorded in an attestation when you have a signed attestation? Or who is making some claim about the software artifact that you're signing? And of course, uh, there's a lot of pain that comes along with trying to do signatures with key management, uh, and, and that's why there have been uh, remarkable strides in that space with things like Sixtor introducing keyless signing in the last few years with OpenPopKey, another newer project uh, that's uh, trying to do similar things uh, with uh, using OIDC authentication for signing. And, and when you put these two things together, you get signed at attestations that contain claims about different parts of your software supply chain. And again, as attestations can be of multiple types, what you see when you start assessing all of these different tools, 
uh, for securing different parts of your supply chain is this repeating pattern of, oh, we have this piece of information and we can express this as an internal attestation, sign it with six store, and so on. So, so far, right, like you have this way of capturing these claims and you have this way of signing off on these claims. It's, there's still this question of what should I be recording from my supply chain? What claims should I be making? Like we just talked about SBOMs a couple slides ago. Is, 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 am I looking to put an SBOM in my attestation and just signing it? Is, is that enough? The SBOMs are really great for some things, right? They're really great for mitigating uh, the next lock for shell, for example, for identifying where you have a vulnerable dependency in your software and how you, what, what you've got to patch. But they're not so great for defending against uh, the next sunburst, right? The solar winds hack of, from a few years ago. Uh, so, and to answer that, uh, so the next question is like, okay, is there a guide, right? To, to understand what I need to record in different parts of my supply chain and so on, uh, what I need to be doing at different, you know, uh, to, to really uh, guarantee the integrity of my processes and my software. And uh, if you look within the CNCF, there's the Tax Security Supply Chain Best Practices white paper from a few years ago. Uh, OpenSSF has this thing called SALSA, there's the NIST SSTF. The Tax Security Supply Chain Best Practices white paper, that's a mouthful. But uh, it contains a lot of really detailed best practices for each of the different phases of your software supply chain. Uh, it, it contains some tooling options and what you need to be, like it, it, it's a bit more abstract also in that it tells you the design considerations you're gonna you know, have in mind. And uh, I also wanna highlight that uh, the V1 came out in like 2021 uh, and there's a V2 effort underway because so much has changed in the last three years or so. Um, so, you know, also, just a small shout out, feel free to jump on that effort as well. Salsa is, uh, again, uh, I think I mentioned over at the OpenSSF, it describes a number of levels for uh, different parts of your software, right? Uh, the, the current focus is on the build track, um, which has three levels and it tells you what requirements you need to care about. It, it defines requirements that you need to care about at each of those levels. And as, uh, and, and as you move up the different levels, you're, you get higher security guarantees. And it also defines something called the provenance of what, uh, of your build process, of, of the built artifact that is a set of metadata that must be collected as your software is being built and recorded as an internal attestation. And um, going back to like, you know, what I was just talking about with like taking attestations and signatures and putting them together, Everything from level two of Salsa uh, uh, V1 build track and above requires that provenance to also be signed. Um, there's, there is uh, ongoing work to move some of this over to like the source track to secure your source repositories for I, I, uh, the dependency track for how you consume external software and, and so on as well. And I wanted to give a shout out to that. Um, but so just, just to zoom out, right, regardless of, so that image is from Salsa's website, uh, regardless of where you are in your software supply chain, those, those, some things remain the same, like just to connect the dots. Uh, you care about who's building your software and who's you know, modifying your source code. It's, it's the, you know, what, the, where all of this is happening. It basically the five W's and the one hat, H, uh, and that's why those concepts, the ability to capture claims and sign, sign them and so on, are so important and that's, and that's why you see that repeating pattern all over the place. And this is also where like, the policies that you care about start mattering. Like, you want to be able to enforce that the correct answers to those five W's and one edge questions, right? The what, where, why, when, who, and how. Uh, are, are all the right things. Uh, I mean, they, they all you know, line up to with what you expect. And um, also where you start focusing on things like the visibility into what's in your supply chain with all of that metadata you've just captured. And you use that to funnel back into like writing the right policies and so on. <clears throat> so separate, like, you know, separating the tools versus the concepts. Uh, Different parts of the supply chain obviously do have very specific contextual requirements, and so you do have all of those specific tools that you need to be 
probably need to be using and you need, likely need some combination of all of them. So it's like, oh, I saw this thing that keeps popping up all, uh, at all of these different places and uh, does that mean that this solves all of my problems? No. Uh, that, but but what, what, what really ends up happening is it's like the connecting layer between all of those different tools and uh, that, yeah, hence the repetition, I guess. Um, so to make sense of all of the tools, you had to reason through what security properties you care about, and things like Salsa can get you a long way there, the best practices white paper can get you a long way there, and the other part of this is what technologies you're already using today, because it's, it's not trivial to say, oh, okay, so now we've got to really start caring about securing our built pipelines. It, you can't really start from scratch with, like, I'm going to throw away my CI-CD system that I have today and start over from scratch with the state-of-the-art security. So the other part of this is, is like, okay, so this is the stack that I'm currently using. This is the set of software that I'm already using. How do I inject these properties into here, into what the stack we already have and move towards a more secure software supply chain? And with that, I'm gonna hand it back to Marina. Great, thank you. Yeah, so once you have all these questions that you now need answered, uh, we'll, start, we'll start to try and answer them. So, uh, Tag Security has recently in introduced this supply chain security tools mapping effort. Um, and the goal is to map requirements from the Tag Security Supply Chain Best Practices White Paper. You know, one of those sets of requirements chosen just because it's within Tag Security as a, as a place to start. And for each of these requirements, find the tools and platforms that address each requirement so you can figure out how to map a set of these tools together to actually achieve all of the different requirements. So we'll go a little bit into how, the, how that works. So say you want to try and secure your build pipeline. We're just going to zoom in on this one piece of the software supply chain. And you already use Tekton for your, for your CI today. That's just that's where you are today. You can use the Tekton Chains um, existing tool to generate provenance attestations. So those are those attestations we talked about before that attest to the different steps of, of the build process. But say you actually use GitHub Actions to build your software. Don't worry, there's already the support for attestations there as well. Um, there's early access support directly in GitHub Actions um, for, for supporting these provenance attestations. What about Jenkins? We also, there's also support there. There's the um, Jenkins Intoto plugin, which also um, creates attestations for your build pipeline. Okay, so we have some kind of build pipeline with some kind of attestations. What's next? Well, you need to sign these attestations, right? That's what we talked about. So you know who is creating the attestations. So to solve this who question, you can sign these attestations with SIGStore. And then you can, add, you can add more layers to this. You can get runtime trace attestations with Tetragon. So you actually can see um, what's happening during the build process itself, as well as just the results of that process. You can use BuildKit to generate an SBOM. If, you, if your users are asking for SBOMs out of this process, if you want to be able to see, get insights into um, everything that's coming into your build process, all your dependencies, um, what these are, where they're coming from, you can use BuildKit to generate an SBOM, which gives you all that information. You can use a tough root of trust so that you know um, where the keys for each of these other steps are coming from. For example, the SIG SIGStore project uses a tough root of trust so that you know where the SIGStore um, I guess the, the six or Fulcio and um, Vecor keys come from, which is the, their, their internal transparency logs. So it's all kind of based on this, this foundational root of trust. That's, still, that's a lot of tools for this one step. I thought we were making this simpler. <laughs> how do you actually find these tools and how do they fit together? And how do you actually use them to build, in, build up a secure software supply chain? That's the goal of this, this, map, this tools mapping effort. Because there's not just one, one tool for each of these steps. This is just kind of an example um, software supply chain just for the build step that you could build. But there's multiple different ways that you can combine all of these wonderful tools in a way that actually provides all of the security properties that you need. So what the supply chain tools mapping does is it provides kind of a landscape of these supply chain security tools um, categorized by which requirements each tool helps you meet. And some of the tools that you use today actually probably um, provide you in, with some of these um, requirements if you just turn on certain configurations and. Or, or use them in a certain way. And there's also existing integrations with other tools. So you can like, use this mapping to then figure out what the easiest tools for you, where you are today, are to, to then move forward. The current status of this process is um, in data collection and organization. We have a series of projects focused on open source projects, along with the, um, the different requirements that each of these projects is able to meet. 
Sometimes there are some projects like say Sigstore that has like a various different sub projects. So it's sometimes broken down like that as well. Um, and the end goal is to make this into kind of an interactive landscape, something like the CNCF landscape, where you can click into the different steps in the software supply chain and find all the tools that you need to meet your goals. Um, and we're still in the process of this data collection. So if you write a software supply chain tool, especially an open source one, um, we have lots of opportunities for contribution. Or if you have a lot of that kind of front end development experience, it can help with the, making this more interactive and usable. It's also a great opportunity to come join in. As well as updating capabilities of existing tools in this, map, in this current data collection stage, because the data is only as good as the experts that help help provide the data. So there's some data in there now, but there's always, always room for improvement. And what, what we're gonna get from this is that if you look at the series of requirements, in this case, this is for securing the source code. These are the requirements taken directly from the um, Cloud Native Security Best Practices white paper. These are all just kind of a summary of the requirements for securing the source code with a series of tools that actually can help you provide each of these steps. So if you look at this, you actually have a couple of different options um, to put these things together and achieve all of this if you just like take, take something that gives you each row and combine those in a way that, that works for you. And some, some of these steps aren't exactly a tool, like the automation step. Is, there's no, no tools today that um, are in the, in the mapping <laughs> that, that provide this property. So if you know of one, you can add to the mapping, or if you want to write a new tool, this also kind of helps us identify gaps in the open source tooling that folks can then go and develop new tools for and, um, and, and solve those as well. So to summarize, what, we, what, we're, what we're doing here is we're taking this, this map of lots of tools, um, all of which solve pieces of the software supply chain, and we're mapping them into the different steps in the software supply chain that they solve. This is, of course, not every tool that's out there, but this is kind of an illustration of how some, some, some number of tools fit into um, th this mapping. I know a lot of people taking pictures, like stay here a sec. But you can see, yeah, at each stage, source, dependency, build, artifact, deployment, there's a number of different options. And within each of those stages, none of these tools actually solve every single problem, right? You have to use these tools together to actually address every requirement. So you can kind of zoom out and zoom in to figure out how to actually address all the problems in your software supply chain. What's next? Um, so in addition to mapping out these tools to make it easier for folks to find them, um, we have a, a call to action to um, make it easier for newcomers to this space to not need to understand all 50 of these tools or however many there are there. Um, and to make this complexity invisible to end users by creating other open source tools that combine all of these tools in a way that actually can secure your software supply chain end to end, or at the very least, secure one of these steps end to end um, in your software supply chain by kind of putting a lot of these tools together into overarching tool into a box, something like a reference architecture. And the security tool belt effort in the OpenSSF is definitely um, taking steps in this direction as well. But always remembering that it's important to know what's in the box and why it's there. Um, just because you have a box that, that solves some amount of problems, you want to know exactly which requirements that, you know, this, this tool is solving for you so you can make sure that you're still actually meeting you know, every single one of the requirements for every single one of the stages of the software supply chain. Going back to there. Yeah, so in conclusion, um, it's called action. This is all open source work that we're talking about, so that means that all of you can help make it better. Um, supply chain a tools mapping effort, there's a, a link there to our data collection effort, as well as um, some, a link to the issue where we're working with the CNCF to help with that visualization effort, which of course everyone could also get involved with as well. The um, supply chain best practices white paper that this mapping effort is based on is going through a V2 revision. This is another great place to get started if there are requirements missing from this mapping that you think should be there, um, they should probably be in this V2 of the white paper. So if you come, come talk, talk with Tag Security, you, you can get those in there as well. And eventually, we, we want this to be a, a tool that everyone can use to find all of the open source, wonderful open source tools in this space and actually solve like, all of the gaps in their software supply chain um, so that can really, can really um, address the, the security of this space together. And yeah, I think we have some extra time, so if folks have any questions, feel free to, to come up. Thank you all. Okay, oh yeah, and there are, mics, there are mics in the middle of the room, if folks don't mind going up there, or we, I can repeat the questions if you can shout. <laughs> Thank you.
Hi, thanks for the talk. Um, one question regarding the amount of work which is required. Um, is it a one-time effort to in implement all those things in the pipelines or is there some regular work needed from people to get it running, keep it running and so on? I think it's a little bit of both. Um, I think the right now, I think the, the goal is just to have an initial effort to have the whole the whole mapping in a nice visual way. And the maintenance work, I think, will be less than the initial work of getting this together, making it really usable. Um, then it'll just be updating capabilities. As tools add more capabilities, um, it should be as easy as changing your configuration to then just add those, those, those capabilities. And hopefully the maintainers of those projects will be incentivized to help show that, you know, that their tools meet these requirements and help us keep it up to date. Thank you very much. Hi, good morning. Yeah, thanks very much for the talk, very informative. Uh, I just wondered whether, you mentioned something like 50 tools there, and I just wondered whether you're also providing some guidance on, on the ease of use, adoptability uh, of those tools, because obviously I imagine there's a number of tools that are doing the same thing. Um, so that, that's one question. The other thing would be the provenance of the, those open source projects themselves. So how, is there some way of us certifying or getting behind the provenance of, of the tools? Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the question. Um, as far as... Um, the usability of the tools, I think the goal here, and I think the goal of tax security in general is to not like pick winners, but to really help people identify the projects. There are other projects in the space that can help folks with um, things like the governance of these projects, things like the OpenSSF scorecards effort or other kind of, um, I guess, scoring efforts of projects to kind of get some insight into what's going on there. Um, I think that's still a work in progress. I think we still have more metrics that we can look at to judge the health of projects. Um, I think that's actually a, a great, um, question in the whole software supply chain space more, more generally. Um, but yeah, I think including um, something like scorecard metrics or something like that is definitely a potential future, future direction for this. Uh, uh, no one has any other questions, I guess we could end this early. Uh, we'll stick around for a bit too if you want to come up and chat about any of this or anything else at all related to this. Uh, thanks everyone. <laughs>